Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the buy, sells, and dividends for the week, which is from July 21st to July 27th. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over here is the dividends from the Robinhood portfolio. That is $24.95 from TSLP. As you guys know, that's a Tesla covered call product. Uh, $35.41 from QDTE and $18.42 from XDTE. Again, that's $18.42. I wish it was $1,800. That would be fantastic. Uh, not quite there yet. So uh, the total number for that comes to $78.78. So the next thing I want to go over here is the M1 Finance dividends. There is no buys on or sells or profits or anything like that this week on M1 Finance. Uh, we've been focused a little bit more heavily on other things than taking profits on our positions lately. Plus, the markets have just been getting drilled into the floor. So we've pretty much just been in accumulation mode. Hasn't really been a whole lot of taking profit lately because, again, the market has had to pull back, which, again, is not really surprising. The same exact thing happened last year roughly around this time. So am I surprised? Mm, not really. So, okay, the dividends from... The M1 finance account this week is $7.62 from RA, $3.14 from USOI, $16.43 from EFC, and $20.45 from GSBD. Just so you guys know, GSBD is a quarterly paying uh, BDC. It does not pay monthly. So we have a few of those, but they're pretty rare uh, in the portfolios that we have because we like to get paid monthly so or weekly, which is even better. So 47 64 on this one. Now I'm going to go ahead and list out the, um, I'm going to list out the buys that we did this week. So the buys in terms of dividend paying stocks was SPYT, uh, Soundhound. Again, the ticker symbol for that is S O U N. Uh, we do see Soundhound as a more long term play now because of the recent news catalyst that came out for it. And the fact that it's actually getting real use case over in Europe is uh, extremely bullish, in my opinion. So and if AI truly is going to take over the world, like I think it is at some point, whether it comes slowly or quickly, to, um, I mean, obviously that matters. But uh, the bottom line is it's the fourth revolution. And, you know, I mean, the reality is people are either going to be on the losing side or the winning side. And we really want to be on the winning, winning side of AI. So we're picking up a lot of AI related things that we think will gain in value. So uh, we got some Soundhound. We got picked up some NVDY on the dip. Again, it's been tanking, unfortunately, with the rest of the market. Uh, XDTE, we also got some of that. And AMZ, those were the dividend paying stock buys for this week. Um, and then in terms of crypto buys, actual native cryptocurrencies, Filecoin, Ethereum, and Zcash. Um, so I'll go ahead and go over to the portfolios now. So you guys are probably wondering, oh, you didn't show this every single day. Well, I mean, look, there's only so much we can do. Some days we don't have the time to actually show this to you. I'm sorry, but, you know, it's just going to be what it's going to be. We can't do this precise every single day while working full time, day trading, swing trading, you know, running this channel, doing a whole bunch of other stuff, just kind of all over the place, doing half a dozen different things at once. We can just simply do what we can do. So uh, portfolio is the same as of right now. Um, nothing's changed. ETCG H Z E N is still the exact same number. As you can see here, it's roughly just roughly basically about a thousand dollars or thirteen hundred dollars in this case, not much. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're not going to add more to this or to these positions or grayscale trusts. It just means that we're not adding at this time. So, um, now in terms of native crypto, you can see what's going on with the native crypto portfolio. We can kind of just look at it. You can see it's up quite a bit from where it was before. So uh, roughly about 35% here. So um, the things that I want to go over here is the crypto buys. So we'll first uh, dial into Filecoin. As you guys know, we are a huge proponent of Filecoin. So... That's last week. So this week, uh, July 21st, basically picked up uh, 10.2 or 10.6 tokens at roughly about 471 a token. Again, Filecoin is extremely cheap right now. I mean, it's basically hasn't really moved much since its bear market lows. So um, again, July 24th here picked up 7.7 .7 coins at 4.55 per share. So 
so you can see the total number of um, coins that we have here or tokens, whatever you want to call them, is just over 500. So uh, the amount that we have invested is actually quite large. So um, we might add more to it, but at this point, we're pretty comfortable with our average cost basis and position sizing. So uh, the average cost basis here is about $7.50 per coin. As you guys know, the all-time high was $240. If you're in the native crypto space, um, you've probably seen Filecoin. You probably know like what its performance has been and stuff. So we could easily do a 20x. I don't see any reason why that's not possible. Uh, if it goes past all-time highs, it would probably do like a 40 or a 50x. So okay, you can see a buyback here for Zcash way back there. Uh, that was right around Bitcoin's most recent peak. So Zcash, we got 1.25 tokens here on basically today at 31.95 per token. And Ethereum, we did pick up some Ethereum. Um, we're actually waiting until our income every single month gets much larger than what it is to pick up a lot of Ethereum and Bitcoin because when these institutions try to buy these um, particular assets, they're probably going to go up a lot and they'll be much more expensive to actually purchase. And our focus as of right now is uh, not entirely on the bigger cryptocurrencies. So um, you can see here July 25th, uh, that was just a couple of days ago, we purchased some ETH. So basically 0 0.006. Again, it's not really a lot, but Ethereum, in my opinion, is still relatively cheap. So $3,284 as an average price. Uh, excuse the noise. There, there's somebody working on the ceiling or something. I don't know what the hell is going on. So uh, that is the cryptocurrencies as of right now and um so that's the ones we bought and then we went over the dips for robin hood and the buys now i'm going to go over the options premiums so in terms of options premiums um uh, so again this is from the 21st to the 27th which is today so july 22nd was a covered call for soundhound um the expiration date is 823 which if i actually go over to the portfolio here you will see uh, let's see, where is it? So you got the expiration dates right here. So that's $22 times eight contracts. Um, Palantir, 722 entry date, cover call. 726 is the expiration date. So that was, um, or sorry, I, I have this as 726. No, we closed it early. That's right. So it was 726. Uh, so Palantir went down. We closed for relatively cheap because you guys, you already know if you do a covered call and the price goes down, then the contract becomes cheaper to buy back. So you can buy back at like a 90, 95% profit rate and just open a new one. So we got $96 in premiums, 48 times two contracts, and then it costs us eight to close early. Soundhound again, 722 entry, covered call, 823 um, exit date. That's $20 times one contract. MS, MSTY, which is, uh, excuse me, y'all, I, I can't do anything about those people being here. So 723, uh, cover call on MSTY, two contracts, entry date, closing date, 816. Um, and then that's $86 times two contracts. NVDY, 723 entry date, cover call, 816, closing date, $16 times two contracts. Mara, entry date, 724, cover call. Exit date, $822, $79 times one contract. And then again, Palantir, $724, cover call. 82 exit date, $35 times two contracts. So the total for that comes out to, uh, whoops, wrong one. So $637 in options premiums for a total on the week of $763.42. Now I'm going to actually go over the buys here so you guys can see these. And just so you all know, there is something I actually want to show you guys on Bitcoin, but I'm going to show you guys that in the next video. So we're not going to cover that in this video. We'll cover it in another one. Uh, but it does indicate that there is a very good chance that crypto is going to go higher from this point, literally from probably this week or today. I'm not exactly sure how to measure this indicator, but I'll show you guys in the next video. So um, you can see here some buys on SPYT on the 22nd, 7.4 shares or 7.47, uh, July 23rd, 7.44 shares and July 25th, 7.64 shares on SPYT. Now I'm going to go over Soundhound. Let's 
Sorry, y'all. I don't know why it's taking so long. So Soundhound. Um, so let's see here. I know it's in here somewhere. Uh, okay, so here it is. Uh, 51 shares at $4.93 per share on the 22nd, as you guys can see there. So I'll now go down to NVIDIA. Uh, let's see here, NVIDIA. Unfortunately, NVIDIA has dropped a lot. NVIDIA has dropped a lot. I mean, there's been a sell-off in the NASDAQ, so a lot of the tech stocks, unfortunately, have gone down. You can see our, sh our total share count here, 246. Okay, so go down here real quick. Uh, 5.41 shares on NVIDIA at 27.72 per share on the 23rd, as you guys can see. Okay, next one, XDTE. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll up here real quick and you guys can see 2.88 shares here purchased on XDTE um, on the 24th. And uh, the last one is gonna be AMZ. So we'll go down to AMZ real quick, which is based on Amazon. I mean, Amazon, I can't say for certain it's a recession proof company, but I mean, and it, literally anybody can buy just about anything on Amazon. So, I mean, name your price. You know, you can buy anything from probably like a dollar all the way up to probably tens of thousands of dollars. All right, so I'm gonna scroll up here real quick and you guys will see that we purchased 7.36 shares, average price 20.38 on the 26th, and then again, 2.43 shares at, at an average price of 20.53. So uh, it's looking pretty good so far. I mean, can't complain. It wasn't you know a huge week like the crypto peaks that we saw, but like I said, um, I suspect crypto is gonna be going up again soon. Uh, the other thing I wanna point out here is the total expected forward earnings that we have on a month over month basis in terms of passive income outside of work is $7,262. So uh, personally, that's almost twice what I get paid at work. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, not quite ready to step away from the labor force yet, but been, been, we're uh, definitely getting pretty close. So uh, we'll talk about that more in the future. So anyways, this is the buy, sells and dividends for the week. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all later. Peace.